South African television writer, director and producer extraordinaire Bong Indaba has been making waves and breaking viewership records for quite some time now. She broke into the TV industry way back in 2003 and went on to work as a head writer on some of the b biggest shows in the country, including the likes of Generations, Uzalo and Isidingo, amongst others. To take us through her close to three decades worth of experience in the industry, the TV powerhouse Bongi joins us now via Skype. Bongi, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Women's Day. Thank you. Happy Women's Day to all the women in South Africa. All right, let's start with uh, the young Bongi Daba growing up. What dreams and aspirations did you have for yourself back then? Uh, the young Bongi Daba didn't even know that right uh, but I was writing since I was like nine years old uh, because we used to listen to radio dramas. So I would write my little radio dramas in a pieces of paper as a child. But at that time, I mean, I'm from a small town. I'm from rural areas. I didn't know that writing could be a career. So I dreamt of other careers. I, I assumed I was going to be a doctor or uh, something else, or well, a gynecologist. Actually, that's what I wanted to be. Okay, and then your f your first big break. When and how did you break into the industry? Uh, I broke into the industry because clearly my family understood that I was always involved in in community theatre stuff, doing everything, trying to acting and all that. So I auditioned at the Playhouse at the time. They were looking for young uh, people with talent, and that was my first big break. They realized that I have talent. And then I, I joined theater. And then after spending time in the, at the Playhouse, and then I went to study uh, for, for dramatic arts. Uh, and then after that, I worked, I worked again in theater for many years uh, before I came to TV. My television break started at Generations, uh, because way back in 2003, they were looking for black writers because, you know, in South Africa, uh, way before writing was mostly in the white writer's hand. So they were starting to put black writers and we were sort of like the first group that that joined there. Mm -hmm. And of all the things you've achieved throughout your career, what would you single out as some of the highlights you can share with us? You know, for me. Everything is a highlight. I won't lie. I'm a girl from a small town, from a place where no one thinks you could be anything really. So everything for me is a highlight. And I look back and I get surprised that I've even worked on international shows. Even being on Generations, having my name there, people back home were just like, I was celebrated because they see someone from their place with Boginda by the name as a writer there. Uh, even when I was still an intern, because I started as an intern, and then I became a head writer. All the other shows that I've worked in, working on Kazlam, I worked on Kazlam, Home Affairs, Sokulu and Partners. I created my own show called Shreds and Dreams that was based on my play, and the SABC was interested in it, and then we, we made it a TV series. So all the stuff, I worked on Josie H, which was an international show. So everything that I've, I've, I've done has always been an achievement to me. And then I started breaking records with ARs. And for me, it's always a shock because I'm just doing what I like. And then I realized that people relate to the stories that I tell and they love them because when I, when I, I joined Isitingo, Isitingo was really down at that time with AR. And I took it up to 2.5 AR to, 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 to 3 million people watching it. So that... All of that surprises me every day, I won't lie. It really is always a surprise, like, oh, am I doing this? Yeah, and I would imagine what a, a goosebump moment seeing your name as the, crud, uh, as the credits roll up there. So who do you look up to in the industry? I know there's been great names uh, in the industry that you've worked with. Um, and, and mostly the people that I looked up to in, in South Africa, I've worked with. I've worked with Mfundi Vunja. I've worked with a lot of writers that, uh, are, are like Mitzi Poisons. I mean, she actually uh, um, mentored me when I started head writing. So that was really, really amazing. Internationally, I look up to a lot of people. Your Shonda Rams, your Eva DuVernay. I mean, I listen to Eva DuVernay's uh, talks all the time uh, just to get motivated. Uh, so all those people, those are the people who inspire me. 
and uh, I read a lot of books. I, I, I learn when I read books. So everybody who is a writer and who's committed to their job, I really look up to them. You know, Bongi, there's also talks of, of opening up the industry, especially for female writers and head writers. What are your thoughts on this? Those are trends, isn't it? People like trending stuff. We've been opening up the industry. I mean, really. I mean, I've trained so many writers that are now, even themselves, are head writers. Every time when I, I am called to be in a team, everyone who has worked with me knows that there will always be two new people who are from school or who are starting out. I always make sure every team that I work with that I have new people because those are the bongis that I was. I was given a chance at Generations as an intern. I make sure that I work with everybody who is new every time. And some of them have fell off, but most of them have succeeded. Uh, I would mention Neo Sibia. That girl, she is so amazing and she's going places. I worked with that girl and it, it was so amazing to see her. Uh, Antonio Rabel, it's amazing to see people like that flourishing in the industry. Uh, when I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I had a hand in their career. I didn't give them the gift. I just helped them to establish themselves. And I'm really happy to watch that. So open up the industry is those hashtags that people love. We've been opening up the industry. And uh, speaking of opening up uh, the industry, I guess, uh, I mean, it can be viewed in the same light as transformation in this industry. And having been in the industry for quite a long time, Bongi, uh, what sort of transformation, if at all, have you seen happen, particularly where women are concerned? It's been very difficult. That I'm not going to lie about. I, I actually feel like I've been through phases of the industry. The, the phase that we started in, it was when uh, we were, the industry was mostly white writers who were writing black stories. And when we came in, we were literally, we're not wanted there. It was like, we're here to steal people's jobs. And, and it was very, very difficult. Working at Generations was not easy, but I appreciate everything that Generations did for me. I appreciate everything that Fundi Vundra did for me. His trust on me was amazing. And then he moved me to Josie H, which I was writing with Hollywood writers and Canadian writers. That was just amazing. Then I think we mo I moved to a, a phase where women are fighting for their presence. Even today, sadly, you come into a room and they're looking for a director and you mention a female director name. The room goes silent. I'm going to mention that because it's so unfair is that we always, as black women creatives, we always have to prove ourselves every day. You will not believe that I still have to prove myself today. But another black guy, not even a white guy, a black guy will come through and everybody's jumping up. Oh, they're so great. They are this, and they've only done one thing. And I've done like 10 other things, but I still have to prove myself. When, when my name is mentioned or another female name is mentioned, people just go silent. Those things need to stop. We are just as equal. We are just as good. We, we're just as hardworking. So that stuff, unfortunately, is still happening. And it's sad to see that when you are a black creative, a female black creative, you need to prove yourself more. Quite uh, uh, female creative, not so much. You mention their names, people are like, yay! But when you mention a black name, it's like, oh, okay. Can they bring their CV? Mm. What have they done? I've broken ARs, I've broken records. That's what I've done, but you still don't trust me. Mm, mm. Well, you make quite a valid point there, Bongi. As a matter of fact, uh, I was uh, just watching a conversation uh, that the past week, I heard in my colleague Sherwin Bryce Pease was in conversation with the director of UN Women, Pumzilim Lambonguga, and uh, uh, Miss Universe, Zosie Bini Tunzi, who said that being a black woman is like being black twice. I mean, each narrative attracts yeah. its own, uh, you know, uh, stereotypes, the racial stereotypes on the one hand and the gender stereotypes on the other. You also brought into this conversation the, the issue of of the uh, of the racial stereotypes being overlooked over white directors and this also we, we can also talk about this in the same vein uh, with the transformation there's also been talks of uh, sexual harassment claims in the industry uh, so what do you make of, of of those claims oh our industry is a cesspool of sexual harassment and and i'm glad that women are starting to talk 
and I hope that we talk even more. Um, and it, it's unfortunate that we're also afraid of our jobs because you will be shunned. It is still a male-dominated industry. We must just be honest about that. So when people start talking, trust me, you will be shut out. That is a fact. And I wish it couldn't be happening, but it is happening. But we are in a cesspool of sexual harassment. I've experienced it. I know people who have experienced it. It's just that there is this thing that a woman is there on display for everybody to just do whatever they want. Whereas all we want, we're coming to work to do just as what men are doing. That's all we're here for. Ah, Bonginda, okay, great chatting to you. Yeah, we don't have much time, unfortunately. I wish I could go on and on and on. You really are in, in, an inspiration to so many young women out there, especially in the creative industry. Uh, do continue entertaining us uh, through the, the work that you do. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right, shining the spotlight on female TV writers. That's a TV head writer, director and producer, Bongin Daba. And we're just in conversation about her career and some of the strides that she's been making in the industry.